Hi guys, so we're here talking about oxidation reduction reactions, which are also called redox reactions. So you might recall recently that you've learned about other types of reactions, say a precipitate reaction for which the driving force is formation of a precipitate, or perhaps an acid-base reaction for which the driving force is formation of water. So with an oxidation reduction reaction, the driving force is the transfer of electrons, which throughout this section I'll denote as E minus. So redox reactions usually occur between metals and nonmetals um, to form an ionic compound in which the metal becomes a positively charged ion or a cation and the nonmetal becomes a negatively charged ion or an anion. So you recall from your knowledge of the periodic table that metals, group one and group two elements, usually become cations and um, nonmetals from your, the right side of the periodic table become negatively charged um, ions. So because we, know that the because we know the conservation of matter tells us that electrons are neither created nor destroyed, that means that in a redox reaction, oxidation and reduction must be coupled. So you cannot have one without the other. So what is oxidation? Oxidation is the loss of electrons or you can also think of it as the gaining of a positive charge. Reduction is the gain of electrons or the gaining of a negative charge. So you can guarantee that this is going to be a little difficult for you in the beginning to remember that reduction is the gaining of a negative charge. So there is a simple way in which to help remember this. And that is by understanding this mnemonic, oil rig. So oxidation is losing and reduction is gaining. Okay, so when something is oxidized, you lose electrons or gain a positive charge. When something is reduced, that means you gain electrons or you gain a negative charge. So here's a very simple um, reaction to illustrate this point. So here we have magnesium, which has an overall zero charge, and it goes to form magnesium two plus. Right? So that means that in order to go from a zero charge to a two plus charge, we must have lost two electrons. So that means magnesium was oxidized. It lost electrons. On the converse of that, oxygen gained a two minus charge. Okay? So that means that it actually gained two electrons. It gained a negative charge. So that means that oxygen was reduced. Here, just um, so we're clear, these brackets are just so I can show the charge on each of the respective elements after they've undergone oxidation and reduction. It is not a sign of concentration. So then also, last point, is that you can have oxidation reduction between two nonmetals. And how do you know that that's what's occurring? Is that oxygen is formed as a reactant or a product. And when you have two nonmetals reacting in an oxidation reduction reaction, the um, product is non-ionic unlike in our um, reaction with a metal and a non-metal. And that's pretty much oxidation reduction reactions. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. Work it. Work it. So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> <laughs> that should be less than. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. 